welcome to the America First Policy Institute Weekly Rundown, where we highlight key media appearances of our policy experts tackling the most critical issues for the future of America. First, we have Chad Wolf, former Acting Secretary of the Department of Homeland Security and Executive Director at AFPI, discussing the Biden administration's failure in addressing convicted criminal aliens. Chad outlines how the Biden administration's prioritization of criminal convicted aliens is ineffective, referencing 435,000 criminal illegal aliens on the non-detained docket. Yeah, look, I, I think obviously DHS is walking the numbers back because it's not, it's not a good look for the administration. You've got over 435 thousand uh, convicted criminals who are illegal aliens on that non-detained docket. The vast majority of them are in American communities today. And so what the Biden administration has tried to tell the American people over these last several years is that their priority for removals is criminal convicted aliens. And yet these numbers tell a different story. Because if you look at the, the enforcement language that the Biden administration uses to tell ICE officers to go remove folks, it's not just a, a criminal conviction. That's not enough. A felony is not enough. You have to be a serious felon for them to remove you, but yet they don't define what a serious felon is. And so it's up to anyone's imagination and understanding of what a serious felon is. Perhaps that's a murderer, but perhaps it's not a rapist. So when you're not very clear with ICE officers and removal officers on who are they are supposed to remove and you put categories and you exempt other categories, you get the end result is you get such a large number of folks on that non-detained docket. Now we hear from General Keith Kellogg, who provides analysis on the conflict between Israel and Iran, discussing possible Israeli responses to missile attacks. General Kellogg talks about Netanyahu's strong military actions against Iran, projecting future hard responses by Israel. He's got a lot of options, and I think he can go a lot of different directions. He is going to respond, Netanyahu is. You know, I, I'm always a little bit surprised that senior leaders or national security experts don't listen to people. If you listen to what Netanyahu said when he was at the UN General Assembly and he talked about Iran, you know, he talked about Moses and he closed with the book of Samuel. They look at this fight against Iran as a biblical issue, a long-term issue. And when you look at Iran, you have to drop down, and then you talk about Hezbollah and the Houthis and Hamas. But their frustration is they're actually fighting this fight by themselves. And you just mentioned that when you showed the map of all the directions that they're fighting. But they are going to respond, and it's very clear they're going to respond. Some of the things you pick up, the tells that I'm picking up is, for example, just the other day they took out four air defense sites in Syria. They call it SEED, S-E-A-D, Suppression of Enemy Air Defense. What they're doing is opening up a lane, a lane into Iran. So where are they going to go? That's a great question. I think they're going to go hard, and when they go hard, you're looking at the potential for Esfahan, or you're looking at their nuclear sites that they want to go after, because when you hear what Blinken said about them getting ready for a breakout, the Israelis have said, we're going to have to do this on our own, because the, the United States has said, well, we want equilibrium, meaning that we want everything to calm down. It's not going to calm down. We should actually reverse that and say, no, we're full squ square behind them. You know, when mm -hmm. you look at the Iron Dome that you just mentioned, the, yes, those sir. three interconnected systems, the fact is that's also a U.S. system, U.S. built system, U.S. and Israeli built system with Israeli IAI helped build that. That's a great system, but it's been very, very effective, and it's given them a lot of latitude, meaning the Israelis, because the Iranians have now failed twice. And I think if the Iranians, if you look at Hamane, the supreme leader, is probably going, mm, this may not be such a good deal. Mm. But I think the Israelis are going to do something. General Kellogg also critiques the Biden administration's handling of the conflict and explains Israel's decisive steps for defense. Kellogg highlights the need for strong American support, criticizing the administration's call for restraint. This shouldn't be about the United States. This needs to be about the state of Israel. We should support Israel full stop without question. We shouldn't be talking about a ceasefire or there's good on both sides. There's wrong. There's good and there's evil. And we need to be on the side of good. Israel is trying to protect their citizens as much as we would do. And they're trying to create that buffer zone. They're cry trying to create that against a, a terrorist network, which is Hezbollah. You know, Hezbollah has blood on their hands with Americans. They are the ones who caused the Marine barracks bombing over 20 years ago, which killed over 200 Marines. And I think mm -hmm. what the Israelis have done, they've taken the gloves off. They've said, the U.N. isn't going to support us, the United States isn't going to support us, we're going to do this ourselves. And they're right to do that, and we should support it. Next, Fred Flights discusses Iran's missile development and the increasing threat it poses to the region. 
Here's Fred Flights on why Israel must take robust action against these threats. That Iran is developing more advanced missiles that are maneuverable in flight and are designed to evade missile defenses. We don't know how many of them Iran has or how accurate they are, but the, the lesson we have to learn here is that this requires a very robust Israeli response. Obviously, Israel can't tolerate an attack like this, even if there is little damage, because the potential of serious damage is growing as Iran's missile program grows. Lastly, we hear from Dr. Rich Rogers and Ashley Hayek, who speak to the importance of American values and voter engagement in protecting these principles. Dr. Rogers and Ashley emphasize the urgency for Americans to vote and defend their rights and the potential impact on future policies. Party is going to be pro-parental rights. Well, I'll, I'll give you two examples. Number one, this administration's Department of Justice called parents domestic terrorists. So what does that tell you? This is not an administration or a party that's going to support parental rights. And number two, uh, the vice presidential candidate, Tim Walz, allowed tampons in the bathroom of little boys throughout the state of Minnesota. So I cannot think of anything more disgusting than those types of policies, and that's what you're seeing from the left. And this is where our, our VP uh, uh, presidential candidate is from. Yeah, he's the governor yeah, Minnesota. there. Minnesota. Minnesota. Yeah. And you can just look at Minnesota. I know Michelle Bachman just had a, two pages of stuff mm -hmm. that he's done, which is crazy. <clears throat> um, <clears throat> who is going to support transgender ideology, puberty blockers, and surgeries on minors? And even some states that if the child wants a surgery and the parent disagrees, some states now have the law to intercept the child and take out of the custody of parents and give them the surgery without the parent's permission. That's really true, right? And that's Kamala Harris from California and Tim Walls from Minnesota. Same, wow. I mean, that is, that is what they embody. Those are their values. And as a mom, okay, as a mom, how does that concern you? Oh, we got millions of moms watching right now. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I mean, it is absolutely horrific. And right now, you have to fight to protect your kids. That's really what this election cycle is all about. Dr. Rich also has four daughters. Mm -hmm. um, and so we talk about this a lot is protect, protecting our rights as parents and just protecting children. They want to literally castrate and prevent children from being mm -hmm. able to have children in the future when they're 12, 10 years old. And yet import 20 million other children. Right. Yeah. Well, and crazy, crazy and ideologies. That wraps up this week's America First Policy Institute weekly rundown. Thank you for tuning in. We hope you found these insights for our policy experts valuable. Let us know your thoughts and feedback in the comments section below. And don't forget to like and share this video. Be sure to subscribe so you never miss an important update on the America First agenda. For more information on our policies and initiatives, visit AmericaFirstPolicy.com.